In playing D&D for as many sessions as I've had, I've collected my fair share of bad D&D stories. This one in particular was my top RPG horror story, hands down. Whenever a conversation would come about awkward D&D sessions, I'd go, guys, you gotta hear this. And this was my go-to ace in the whole session, which why have I not told it yet? So, settle in. I had an old 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons group that I played with for a while when I first got into the hobby. One of the DMs had invited me to play in a special Dungeons & Dragons game. When I asked what exactly made this game special, he explained. Our DM was interested in getting together what he called an all-star D&D group together. He wanted to have a more cinematic game experience. He didn't want to spend an entire session walking to a town, spending one hour role-playing, six hours fighting, with players just not remembering their abilities. He looked at me and said, Hey Ben, I'm making a responsible game for responsible people, and you, you look like you're a guy who's, who's got all his shit together, and who doesn't forget his spells, and takes it most uh, ser seriously serious. And someone who comes with character concepts that are not super lame and uh, doesn't talk out of character and is super smart, big brain having person. And uh, uh, these are, are all very true things that he, he said to me. And if you've seen my other videos, you, you, you can confirm that these are all uh, 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 factual statements that are not incorrect or wrong in any way, shape or form. Basically, joking aside, he was inviting me to a game of D&D that was trying to be more serious. Surprisingly, I was one of the more serious people playing at the time. Our table was kind of a goofball group. We made jokes, we talked shit, I at least paid attention during his info and lore dumps. I couldn't remember any of it, but at least I tried. When we would have super long combat sessions, people would often tune out and need an update on what was going on. And I get it, I really do. I think anyone who's been playing D&D for any length of time knows that, well, you want to have this Lord of the Rings experience. You usually end up at the Shire with players debating about gardening for three sessions, with a DM trying to get somewhere, but it keeps getting undercut by people talking out of character and everyone becoming distracted by minor thags. And whenever you watch a movie, the characters are like, wait, I got a plan, and then it cuts to some high octane chase scene. You don't watch a movie where you have the characters debating for an hour before nothing happening. Plus, we were a group of seven people. He wanted to try DMing for a smaller table. So I said, okay, that sounds like fun. I'm in. We were told not to bring our own characters because he wanted to make our characters in session zero. The day of the game, I show up and there's two people that I haven't met before. One is a new player and the other is his girlfriend. I started talking to them asking, Oh, you guys play D&D? The new player goes, what's D&D? I was just invited to play a game. Turns out the DM was trying to surprise him, so he explained nothing about what he had planned for today. There's supposed to be another new player, but he hasn't shown up and he's not going to come because he had to bail at the last minute. We asked the girlfriend, hey, do you want to play? She shrugged, maybe. The DM butted in, she has to play. The DM explained that in D&D, there are four roles, leader, defender, striker, and controller. He suspects that the reason we've been having so much of a problem in the other game is that we've doubled up. We've got duplicates of each one. In order to fix this, we're just going to have one of each of the four player roles. Four players, four roles. Oh no, I know where this is going. Usually with me as a player, um, I usually don't like going into games where people are like, oh, come on Wednesday and we need you to bring a cleric or bring this specific class. The reason I don't necessarily like that is usually because they aren't just asking me to play the class. They're asking me to play it in a very specific way. Really, when they say come on Thursday and bring a cleric, what they mean is we need a healer. You know, we need you to outfit your character so he has he healing capabilities. Or if they're like, bring a rogue on this thing. They, they want me to find traps. They want me to sneak. They want me to steal stuff. Um, and so whenever people are asking me to make a specific character, 
They're usually asking that because they want me to play it in a very specific way, and I lose that freedom. So already, I can kind of tell where this is going. We sit down. Because these are new players, the DM has to explain D&D to them. So he starts going through the general introduction of d and a role-playing game. Each player seems a persona, one of the characters, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually we get to the character creation. The DM pulls out a stack of blank character sheets and pencils. And I immediately panic and pipe up. <laughs> Wait a second. We're, we're uh, <laughs> making, making characters by hand? Yep. Uh, we've got we've got some new players here. Uh, do you really think that's a, that's a good idea? <laughs> Maybe you want to do pre-gens? Or, hey, why, why don't we use that online character creator, huh? Just to explain, in 4th edition, there was an online program which you could use to make your character for you. Unlike D&D Beyond, where you have to pay for each book you use, this program was a $7 per month thing but it had every single book and every supplement, and there was a lot of options. It was nice to have everything in one place between Player's Handbook 1, 2, 3, the world books, all the Dragon Magazine options. It was great for new players and even veterans because as you were making your character, it would tell you what you were qualified for and what you weren't. If there was an error or something, it would prompt you, hey, you changed your class. You can't use this weapon anymore. So that's why I had to ask, why are we not using the character builder? because they need to learn how to play D&D the right way. He handed them a pencil and a blank character sheet. The problem with our old group, he felt, was that his players would just go online, pick powers at random, print off their character sheet, and use their powers willy-nilly. His players, he suspected, weren't really digging into the meat of how their abilities work. He argued that if they at least took the time to write everything down, you'd at least know what's going on it. You're not gonna have this situation where someone picks a doppelganger as their race, and then four sessions in, finally reads the ability and goes, wait a second, I can change into other people? How long have I had this? That person was me, and I feel really bad about it. In 4e, writing a character sheet by hand was particularly troublesome because so much of combat relies on these powers, which often have secondary effects. So he asks us, which player is going to be which role? We already know there's four players for four roles. We can't double up. I decide to pick last. The new player picks striker, the girlfriend picks defender, my friend picks leader, and I pick controller. We then each pick a class. The striker role picks the rogue class. Our defender role picks the fighter class. Our leader class picks the war priest. And I, as the controller, pick the wizard class. We then went on to character race. The DM explains to our fighter, Fighters have to have high strength and constitution, so you could pick a dragonborn, dwarf, or human. Or one of the other ones. I pipe in. There's a whole whole set of races you could play as. The DM shook his head. No, we're not having mismatched class races. We made this mistake once before, we're not making it again. Because this is going south so quickly, I keep offering some suggestions, but they keep getting shot down. I'm saying stuff like, why didn't we use pre-gens, or let them pick whatever they want? or use character building program, or just skip over this section. But it's not working. Have you ever gotten so embarrassed that you just wanted to blend in with the wall and fade away? That's me right now. I'm sitting on the couch, and every time we get farther into character creation, I notice that the new players are getting more and more frustrated, and I'm sinking a little bit lower and lower into the cushions, getting more embarrassed as this goes on. Because the new players, obviously, to me, aren't having fun getting told what to do. The DM would be like, okay, time to figure out stats. You can have this number, this number, this number. There are lots of different options you can have, and you can adjust your stats however you want. But since you're a fighter, your primary stats are strength, and your secondary stat is constitution. So you want a 17 or 18 in your primary, and 17 or 16 in your secondary. Once they make their <coughs> choices, Question mark? We have the long, arduous task of filling in all the boxes. Reflex, willpower, attacks, picking powers, armor, gold. I can tell the players are not having fun. They go over all the options just for the other two to tell them which choice is actually the best one. The DM thinks he's being helpful, which he is, but it's, it's also not that much fun. Although, let's be frank, character creation's not much fun when you're a new player. 
While the new players were talking, I remember one of them said something like, wow, in D&D there's all these different choices to make, but like, they kind of don't all matter that much, and it's, it's a lot of paperwork to do before you actually play the game. Also, the girlfriend, she's not a native English speaker. I can't remember how long she'd been learning English, but I do remember that she was quiet and kept having to get things translated by her boyfriend, and she seemed really, really lost, and I don't know if I can help her, because she doesn't recognize a lot of English words like constitution, reflexes, armor class. Finally, after four hours of tutorials and character creation, our characters are set up. The DM is totally happy with our characters. I'm playing as a child wizard named Kevin. Our other veteran is a Tempest War Priest and a noble. Our Dragonborn fighter is... big? And our halfling rogue is... a rogue that is a halfling. That's all I can remember about them. We start off and get into a fight. There's some role playing going on, but it's just between me, the DM, and the cleric. The two new players are just watching us with this what's the fuck look on their faces. I know I as the character should be trying to include them more in the dialogue, but that would require me to make eye contact with them. And I'm just, I'm so embarrassed. I just, I just can't. Besides, after what we put them through, if they want to sit out, I'm fine with that. During the roleplay, I ended up doing a little skit. My character got stabbed, and it led to this overly dramatic thing where Kevin is burst into tears. He thought I was going to die. The pain was horrible. The cleric healed him, but he continued to whine about it. The DM explained to the new players, D&D is, at its core, a storytelling game. You need to not worry about the numbers, stats, damage. Actually, I prefer not to use the term role-playing. It's a bit misleading. Really, it's acting. You are actors trying to convey the emotional highs and lows, and focusing on the story is the most important part. After the session was over, with 30 minutes of play, the DM started giving us pointers. Fighter, really, you should think about using a voice. Try going a bit more deep. You're a dragonborn for crying out loud. Cleric, you are a noble. Try being a bit more uh, respectful, a bit more hmm, hmm, refined, I guess you could say. And Ben, the bit you did with Kevin where he was crying, like it was okay, but you gotta tone it down a bit, like it lasted too long. He's just, he's a bit too innocent, don't you think? After that was done, we finally finished up the session. Four hours, making characters, 30 minutes, playing. The DM ended it. Okay, we'll be finishing it up here. See you guys next week. The two new players got in their car, left, and the saddest part is, I never saw them again. That was the first and last time I ever met with them. And the one thing I regret is I never got to tell them how very sorry I was about how that game went down. I had found out afterwards that our DM wasn't happy with the way our regular group had been running. He felt that we were playing our characters too suboptimal, and that's why the fights were taking an ungodly length of time. Which is why he was interested in playing D&D the way it was intended, the way it was represented in the book, with four roles, one character from each role, at the appropriate levels, with the appropriate class and race. But part of the difficulty comes down to mathematics. Like, the enemy has 200 hit points, and the players can dish out only about 20 points of damage in a round, excluding missed attacks, that fight is gonna take 10 rounds, no matter how much you slice it. I've kind of wanted to make 4E stories for a while, but I couldn't really make a video on some of those earlier games and always decide against it, because what would I do? A lot of them were just flat boring. It's easy to make fun of bad, but boring's a lot tougher. What kind of video would I make? After all, if I were to make that video, it would just be me on the screen going, we fought goblins for eight hours, and then cutting the video right there. 